morning. Today we're here to talk about conics. Well, actually it might be a good night for you. But anyways, we're talking about conics. And we're going to look at three different conics. We're going to look at circles, we're going to look at ellipses, and hyperbola. Now don't, don't fret, because in calculus, again, we really just need to know the basics of these three conics so that we can apply into the calculus concept. Let's do a quick review. First thing, let's look at our best friend circles. Now I say best friend because they're, the, they're like the foundation of conics, and they're pretty straightforward. Like for example, if we consider a circle that's centered here at the origin, zero, zero, and we look at any point on the circle, let it be x, y, and then we have a radius of r that stays constant. Well, using Pythagorean theorem, you see this is how we develop the equation then for a circle, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now, another common way of writing the equation for a formula is when we divide each term by r squared, and we end up with x squared over r squared, y squared equals 1, okay? Let's do an example or two and see if it makes sense to you. We get to page 2, here we go. Now, so example A. Now, this circle here has a center at 0, 0. Now, I know that because I looked at my x and y variables, and I noticed that there's nothing being added or subtracted to them. Therefore, there's no horizontal shift. And according to the general formula for a circle, the radius then is the square root of 36, which is 6. So this one's pretty straightforward. I have a center at 0, 0 with a radius of 6, and I just make a quick sketch, and there's my circle. Let's move it forward. Okay, and here we have another circle, because you notice it follows the pattern. x squared plus r squared, oops, sorry, y squared equals r squared. But this one, though, the center is not at 0, 0. Now, we've talked about the horizontal shift, so the x value is the opposite of negative 3, which is 3, y value being negative 2, radius 5. Again, swap the circle first, over 3, down 2, and then a radius of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to have to estimate here because my graph paper, 1, 2, 3, 4, somewhere like that. And here we have our circle. See, don't you love circles? I do. Okay, moving on along, let's talk about an ellipse. Well, an ellipse is simply a circle, but it's been stretched. So it has a stretch going on, okay? So you'll notice on the general equation for a circle, instead of this being a constant of r squared and r squared, the denominators here can be two different values, okay? And so a squared and b squared. Now, a will represent the horizontal stretch from the center, and b will represent the vertical stretch from the center. So let's take a look at an example. Remember, it always has to be in this form where it's equal to 1. So if it's not equal to 1, you may have to divide both sides by a constant. So our first example here. Now notice the center is at 0, 0, because there's no horizontal or vertical shift going on there. Now let's talk about the length of A and B. So A, if you look underneath the x variable, has a value of 5, the square root of 25. And B, if you look under the y variable, has a value of 6. So the center is at 0, 0. A represents the horizontal distance from the center. So I'm going to go over 5 to the left 5. 6 represents the vertical distance from the center, up 6, down 6. So my ellipse then will look like this. Fantastic. Okay, let's try one more. Now this one we see that we have the center has been shifted. Now look at the x variable first. So the x value is going to be negative 3. The y value will be positive 1. Now the value of a is the horizontal distance from the origin, and it aligns with x. So that will be the square root of 4, which is 2. The vertical distance from the center aligns with y. That's going to be 4. So we go over negative 3, up 1. Go right 2, left 2. Up 4, down 4. And here is our ellipse. Fantastic. Let's do one more, and then we're done. Hyperbola. Now, hyperbola is the most complex, but actually, once you understand the parts, it's really just dandy. Okay? So to graph a hyperbola, first step is find the center. Again, you're going to look at the x and y and you're going to determine if there's a horizontal shift or not. And I notice this is just x squared and y squared, so the center is at 0, 0. Second step is you create the rectangular box. 
Now, this is not actually a part of the graph, but it gives us a framework. So, again, we're going to use this A value and this B value to determine the horizontal distance from the center. And the B, the square root of B squared, will determine the vertical distance from the center. So you can see we have A and B, okay? And then we sketch in that rectangle, again, to give us a framework. Next, we draw in the asymptotes. Now, the asymptotes are just the diagonal of the rectangle box, rectangular box. And this will give us an idea for the asymptote, you know, the width of it, how far is it stretched or shrunk. Mm -hmm. So then, once we have this framework here, all I need to do then is decide, does my graph open up or down or left and right? Well, we'll determine that because you look at the first term that is positive, the term that is positive, so if it's x squared, it's going to open left and right. So this is the actual part of the graph. Whatever's in blue. The green are just guidelines. Now, if the positive term is a y squared, then your hyperbola will open up or down within the guidelines set by the rectangular box and the asymptote. So let's try a problem. Maybe two. Okay. First one. Remember, step one is graph the center. Well, we know the center is at zero, zero. Okay, step two, let's graph the rectangular box. So A will represent the distance from the center uh, horizontally, that would be three. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And B will represent, because the square root is 25, the vertical distance from the center, five and five. Now let's draw in that rectangular box. Notice it's sketched, because it's not actually part of the graph again. It's just the guidelines. Now we draw our asymptotes, the diagonal of the rectangular box. And again, this will let us know the stretch shrink of my hyperbola. Okay? And now we actually draw the, draw the hyperbola. Does it open up or down, left or right? Well, since the x squared term is positive, it's going to open left and right. So I go to opposite the center and the rectangular box, and I follow the curves of the asymptotes. This gives me the stretch of my asymptote. So the, whatever is in green is the actual graph of the hyperbola. Okay? Now let's do the second one. Again, the center first. It's going to be negative 1, positive 4. So negative 1, positive 4, that's the center. Now let's draw in the rectangular box. The value of A is 4. So I'm going to move four units from the center to the right and to the left. And then the length of B, well, this is all over one. So square root of one is one. I'm going to go up one, down one. So I'm going to draw in my rectangular box. Okay, now I'm going to draw the asymptote so I can get an idea of the stretch shrink of this hyperbola. I hope that this is all making sense to you. Coming back to you from algebra two. And now I have to decide to just open up, down, left, or right. Well, since the y variable is positive, it's going to open up, down. So the center was here. So I go to where the, the I go to the, the vertex of my hyperbola will be in the rectangular box opposite of the center. And then I have to follow the asymptote. You notice this one has twice the y. And do the same thing. So whatever is green is the actual graph of the hyperbola. I hope that helps. Now answer the questions that follow.